Uh, my name is Ron Carter, and I'm the President and Executive Director of the nonprofit Strand Theatre Initiative. Uh, the Strand Theatre Initiative was founded in 2001. Um, in addition to myself being on the Board of Directors, we had a number of people that became board members, and we founded the nonprofit corporation with the sole purpose of redeveloping the Strand as a performing arts center in addition to screening classic films. I got involved with the Strand quite by accident. Uh, I was taking my son to flag football practice and we were just driving from Cranberry to the Seneca Valley campus and drove through Zillianopo on Main Street when I happened to see the theater which was in a terrible state at the time. It was already been in deep decay and closed for I think almost 20 years at that point. I saw that it was for sale and started developing ideas about how it might be reused and it all kind of snowballed from there. It, it took a lot of years but um, I have been with the organization since its inception and it's just been a roller coaster ride to get the theater up and running to where it is today. My name is Susan Cup, and I volunteer for the Strand Theater. The Strand Theater has been up and running starting on six years now. We had uh, a lot of renovation projects that needed to be done. Basically, the whole theater was gutted. So uh, there were some preliminary fundraiser attempts, and uh, happily, enough was raised to get the first phase of the Strand Theater started. It's been quite a process from the time that uh, I first discovered the theater to the point where we got it remodeled and reopened as a performing arts and classic film center. Um, really, it goes back to the very early days when we were developing this plan. And what happened was we had met with a number of businesses locally and we developed what they called a feasibility study, uh, which is basically taking a look at the structure, seeing how it was engineered, seeing what could be done with it in order to bring it back as a performing arts center. And we just started coming up with a plan that we could pitch the idea of a redeveloped uh, Strand Theater to both local and regional and even downtown Pittsburgh. Um, I actually came in on the third year of planning, but uh, basically I've been a volunteer now for 10 years. We met with a whole variety of uh, people and groups including five different downtown-based uh, foundations, all of which ended up contributing hundreds of thousands of dollars toward the Strands renovation. So from the 2001 time frame when we first founded the nonprofit to July of 2009, it's, we spent eight years fundraising and two of those years in renovations, and then the theater was reopened on July 16, 2009. We do off-site fundraising, Taste of the New North, is our biggest fundraiser and uh, we also provide uh, the financial resources to do the orchestra that you hear uh, 4th of July. As well as uh, public funds in the amount of $400,000 it all just started to ramp up and up and up during the course of years to the point where we had enough money put together to get the renovation started which also included something that we call a seat sponsorship program. Even before we owned the building, the owner at the time, Gloria Nalavanco, allowed us to use the, her storefront window in the theater to help raise money by asking for donations for a seat sponsorship. And people would donate $200 just on the chance that when the theaters reopened, that they would have a, a nameplate on the back of their seat that would have their name on it and certainly give a lot of credit to the people who made those donations even before we owned the building because at that point there was no guarantee that the theater was going to be reopened and renovated. Well, the theater was in very, very, the theater was in very poor condition uh, even from the very beginning when we first started looking at it. And it was a shame that it, was, that it decayed so badly but on the other hand, it almost was an advantage because it gave us a blank slate. So when the theater was first laid out, even back in 1914, it was pretty much a straight 
um, traditional theater layout where you had a long um, auditorium and at the very end of the auditorium was either the stage or the screen. And when we looked at that, we realized that even for an intimate space, that that would not be a great design for a performing arts center because even for a small space, the furthest seat in the house is still going to be a good 150 feet away from the stage. So what we ended up doing was we, we, desi we designed it turning the seats 90 degrees so that now the seats that are toward the back of the stage are only about 20 feet away and it just gives us a much, much better, much more intimate uh, design and atmosphere. And we've gotten great reviews, not just from audience members, but artists. We've had people like Debbie Reynolds perform here and John Oates of Hall and & Oates and the Celtic Tenors. And each of them have just praised the design of the theater because they look at it as if they're performing in their living room with 100 or 200 of their, of their closest friends. And that's how people really enjoy this space. And we had all new concrete and steel and plaster put in place, all new electrical, all new wiring, and all new plumbing so that even though the building on the exterior is 100 years old, now it's all state-of-the-art. And a million words wouldn't do the trick and love cannot build a bridge You need construction workers for this oh, Love could me with a thousand blades and gave me a melancholy face And he loves well we, we do work very hard to find uh, a, a good variety of programming so that there is something for everybody here. Um, just as an example, at least once a month we want to have a family-friendly movie here. Um, and, and honestly, th that's not terribly difficult. I mean, The Strand, even though we will do a variety of programming, we love to have families come in with uh, either young kids or even adolescents. Like, like this, for an example, um, one weekend we have the newest X-Men movie. And then the following weekend, it might be a romantic comedy. Again, it's, it's usually that um, latest blockbuster that, that performs the best. But, we, um, but it's very easy to get family-friendly product. There's a lot out there, and people aren't taking advantage of it. Other venues aren't taking advantage of it as much as I think we are. Uh, so I actually pack a lot of those flyers into my car. So whenever I'm just out and about doing my normal daily activities, I will pass brochures out to various stores, restaurants, beauty salons. Uh, when I travel out of the Zelenico area, I'm also just verbally promoting because we want as many people as possible to realize that this is a really cool cultural center. Not just movies, that's the least that we do. We get all kinds of live entertainment and people from Broadway who come in. Well, the Strand has what I would categorize as uh, a small group of volunteers comparatively, but they are very, very dedicated. It, uh, the theater is run almost 100% by volunteer service. I'm Janet McKinney and I've been a volunteer at the Strand for about two and a half years. Well, my name's Marilyn Fleischman and um, relatively new for under a year. My name is Bob O'Leary and I think I'm finishing up probably my first year here. I started last fall and uh, enjoy being here. My name is Terry Ramsey. I've been volunteer here for uh, two years. My wife Nancy Ramsey volunteers too. I'm normally the usher and she's normally uh, the concession stand. I wanted to meet some people from the community. I've lived here for about four and a half years and I wanted to meet some new folks, and make some friends and give back to the community. Well, many, many years ago, I used to volunteer down in Pittsburgh at one of the theaters down there. And I've recently moved to Zealand Opal and thought it would be nice to volunteer here. So I just came and knocked on the door and said, do you need any volunteers? <laughs> We're retired at the present time, and it's just something to pass the time away. I grew up in this area and moved away for 30 years, came back and recently moved back to Zelenoble and saw that what they had done to the theater and thought I'd like to be a part of it. 
I'm working the concession stand right now, but I've done box office. I tried um, house manager a couple of times. It was a lot of fun. So I sort of do a little bit of everything. Well, right now, um, I started out ushering um, and greeting people at the door as they come in. And now I've worked my way up to concessions. <laughs> So, um, you know, running the popcorn machine and, and getting drinks and, and all that for the, for the customers that come in. I started out just doing, um, taking tickets at the door, worked my way up to concessions, and pretty soon I can maybe do the box office or house manager, just wherever they need me. I'm here to help. Uh, we make coffee, we pop popcorn, it's always a, a challenge to figure out how much popcorn to make before the show starts because we, we're not sure how many people will come. We always hope for a, a full house. Uh, so we make popcorn, we make coffee, just make sure that we have everything stocked and ready to go. Well, we uh, basically check, make sure the restrooms are in good shape, make sure the concession stand has uh, all their supplies because a lot of the supplies are down in the basement and we bring them up. We are trying to do more and more to attract and interest uh, the younger generation that, that might not think of theater as, as cool or hip or, or something that they would, they would be interested in. It's not something that they're not going to be interested in. It's not something they're going to be unfamiliar with. And it's a great way to say, hey, this live theater really does offer something. And then we have shows um, like John Oates which certainly probably skews to an older generation, but then those parents will bring their kids with them to experience it. And all of a sudden, we've got a much younger uh, fan base in, in here than, than we would have expected. And another example, as, a, as an in-house production we do at Christmas time called Rudolph, Frosty the Grinch, and Friends. And it's all the music from those classic Christmas TV shows of the 1960s and 70s. So that's something that my generation grew up with but then we bring our kids out to uh, listen to that music and then we have clips from the shows and animations that kind of hold the kids' attention. And again, it's a, it's a great opportunity to introduce them to live theater in a way that they're familiar and comfortable with. And then hopefully they'll come back for shows like Oliver or um, shows like I Love You, You're Perfect, Now Change or Private Lives, things that are more traditional theater offerings that they might think to themselves, oh, I, I, saw the, I saw this show at the Strand, and this one probably would be great to watch. I mean, you have your people who are very good with technology, and uh, so they are ones that run the soundboard, do the lights. Now for live shows, the process is a good bit more complicated. We still do some controls through this touchpad. We can control some of our lights through these uh, control pads here and we also have the capacity to switch around the types of sound that we carry but we also have a very uh, sophisticated soundboard which can hold up to 56 channels for different uh, microphones and uh, amplifying instruments anything that we need from a sound ampl amplification standpoint happens through the soundboard and then over here is the light board when we do much more complex live programming, we have a fully appointed light board that can actually run the show just by tapping what we call a go button, which basically means that once, the, once the, all the lighting cues are programmed into the light board, all the person who mans this uh, uh, control board, all he has to do is press the button and then the lighting will advance and the different lighting programs will come up. We also will sometimes use a spotlight uh, we'll have a spotlight operator here. So for a live program, it could be as many as four to five people up in this control area to control the sound, the lights. If there's, if there's a multimedia programming, uh, so there'll be somebody to, to run the multimedia lights, and then also the spotlight operator. So at any given time, there could be up to four people running a live show here. I like uh, to volunteer for the live shows. They're a lot of fun, and when I come for a live show, I like to volunteer as an usher. I feel like I'm hosting a party, and when everybody comes in, I greet them, help them find their seats, and it's just a lot of fun. But it's, you know, it's a lot of fun here no matter what job you do. If you work in the box office, which is answering phone calls and also uh, taking 
pre-ticket sales orders, uh, you need to be in the box office two hours before a show, a live show. If it's an in-house production, it really, uh, even that is dependent upon how complicated or how uh, involved the production is. For one of our Broadway concerts, it's not as involved as a full-on production such as Oliver or I Love You, You're Perfect Now Changed or Private Lives, where you are building an entire set and you're going to be uh, involved in extensive rehearsals and working with a live ensemble. And those types of programs, and certainly Oliver would certainly be the most extravagant program that we've done to date, where we spent months you know, planning it and casting it and developing the design for the set and then building the set and then having to tear it all down afterwards. That is certainly the most complex program that we've ever had to do. The box office for a movie is real simple. We just sell tickets, but sometimes we get people who come in and want to buy tickets for live shows or they'll call on the phone, so we do that. That's all uh, on a program on the computer, so we pull up and find the best seats and take their information, print out the tickets. Then we develop a timeline. So all the pre-planning happens even before you start working on the, the program itself. So from the very early points on, you're planning it and then you're deciding what that product is going to be. And once you decide what the product is going to be, you decide who your best cast members might be. And once you get casting done, then you start writing the script. And once you're in the script writing process, then you see, okay, we're going to need these types of set pieces. We're going to need these types of props. We're going to need to have these kinds of projections. And that goes forward. And while you're, in the, while you're developing those designs, you're starting to get those cast members in. You're starting to go over their music with them. You, have, uh, you meet with the ensemble and you do what they call a, a, a sits probe which is when the performers and the band just get together and listen to the music, sing it together, get comfortable with it, and then we complete the rehearsal process. And as you're completing the rehearsal process, you're finishing up the execution of all the designs that you've put together for the set and the atmosphere and props to the point where now you're at the stage where you're just about to go on stage and all those last minute details that need to be taken care of and you never realize what they are until you get there. And the, then you get to the point where you're on the stage, ready or not, here comes the audience. And then once you have the performances done, then it's cleaning up and, and by that time you're planning for the next show. So it is an ongoing, endless process uh, to develop these programs and, and bring them to the theater. Well, if there's misconceptions uh, revolving around what it is to, to manage the operations of the theater, it's, it's probably not misconceptions, it's probably just they have no idea what goes on in, into running uh, a theater like, such as The Strand. It's um, uh, everything from organizing volunteers to get the theater staff because the theater lives and dies by volunteer support. Um, we'd never be able to keep the theater running if we had to pay all the people that were on staff. And so organizing volunteers to be here to be concessions and box office and ushers and, and all, all the event planning. I mentioned much earlier that we have these events that are fundraisers to support the theater. There have been a lot of memorable moments that have taken place since I um, started managing the operations of the theater. It'd be really, really hard to try to nail it down to one or even two, but I'd say it's really, it's some of the friendships that have been forged with people that you've only met once in your entire life and kind of staying in touch with them. Well, the Strand has certainly had a positive influence uh, on the community from the standpoint that it's become an anchor for Main Street and Zillion Opal. You know, part of the, the pitch originally when we first thought we could develop, redevelop the Strand as a performing arts center was the economic impact. Uh, my favorite part is 
having a sense of keeping something that I feel is really important uh, alive. Because this theater was totally gutted. Nobody wanted it. It probably, in the near future, maybe even had, would have been a property where serious consideration would have been made as to whether we tear it down. So it's very exciting to see that this actually is a thriving entertainment center. Yeah, it's nice because I'm getting to meet a lot of the um, volunteers themselves and uh, also the people that come in. You know, they're very friendly. They're looking forward to the shows, whatever it may be. And um, I think that's my favorite part. Best part for me about this job is what I like to do is I'll sneak up onto the landing to the balcony and that's a great vantage point where I can see the audience during the course of a show and and but I they don't they don't see me and I'm not in, in inserting myself into the program whatsoever but what I get to do is to look out over that audience and see how they are transfixed on what's happening at the stage and th in many cases just the unbridled joy that they have in seeing a performance here. And for just a couple hours, they get to come here and forget about all those things for at least a limited amount of time and just enjoy what's happening on stage. And when I get to see that audience react in a way where they have forgotten about everything that's going on around them except what's happening on stage at that time, that's the best job satisfaction anybody can get.